Right, I've created a model called Pickup and Drop-Off. And the purpose of this demonstration is to show how we can use resources that are movable, that can walk around and pick stuff up and take it and carry it and put it somewhere down. To illustrate what I want to do, um, in this model, maybe just for starters, I've set my modeling time units to be seconds. Um, and I'm going to start drawing using my space marker palette, a tea room right at the top. I'm going to call it space tea room and it will be randomly distributed. I'm going to create two other areas. One called space arrival. and another one called Space Shipping. So I'm going to create two workers that are situated in the tea room. I will then create two entities that will arrive in the arrivals area. The entities will then, every time it arrives, it will summon or request a resource to come and pick it up. The resource will then have to move it to the shipping area, uh, after which it actually places the entity, the unit down, and either go back towards the arrival area if a new entity has actually arrived, or if there are no entities waiting to be carried, it will return back to the tea room. So to start off with, I'm going to my process modeling library and create a resource pool that I'm just going to call worker. It will be a moving resource. I'm going to define the capacity to be two. And the speed will be three units per second. Their home location will be space T room. Now I can start creating my, my logic. I will generate entities. I'm going to leave the name default. I will define their inter-arrival time to be normally distributed with standard deviation 8 and a mean of 90 seconds. I'm going to limit the number of arrivals to two units just to make sure for starters that our logic actually works. It will create a new entity of type agent. The location on arrival should be some network node and I want it to be space arrival. And the speed of these units will be only two units per second. As soon as the entity has been created, they should seize a resource. It should be units of the same pool it should be workers, and each entity should only seize one of the workers. I'm going to make the queue capacity a maximum amount, so I, I don't have to put in any queue um, entity. Uh, so that there can be an infinite number of entities waiting in the arrivals area. I want the entity to actually send a particular resource. And I want the resource to be sent typically from the tea room or wherever the resource actually is. And the destination should be the entity. And as soon as it arrives at the entity, it should also attach itself to the entity. I'm not going to redefine the entity location because we've already done that in the source block to, to say this is where the entity actually is. After it's been seized, I want the entity to move. It will not automatically jump to, but it should move to space shipping with some small offset. I'm just going to make it 0 0.3 and it will be the movement will be defined by the distance and the agent speed in this case will be two units per, per second. So slightly slower than, than what the person can actually walk on its own. 
This will entail the entity being carried, because the resource is currently attached to it, to be carried over to the shipping area. Once it actually arrives there, it can actually release all of the resources. In this case, there will only be one resource at a time. I want the moving resource, which is the worker, to actually return home. But it should only return home if there are no other tasks waiting for the resource. So it doesn't have to go back to, to the tea room. It should go directly back to the arrivals area if another entity awaits uh, carrying. <coughs> as soon as the entity is being released um, from the resource, then we can actually dispose of it. But we want it to just remain visible for a while so that we can just kind of keep track of it. And for that purpose, I'm going to add a delay block. The delay time will be fixed in terms of 100 time units. Um, I'm again going to use the maximum capacity because I do not want the... Um, entities to actually be blocked before the, the delay um, block. Um, again, as for the case of the seizing, I'm not going to define the entity location because the move to block already specified where the entity um, is being carried to, somewhere in our space shipping area. And afterwards, I can just sync the entity, kind of just dispose of it. And this should give me a model that builds correctly. On the source side, I created at a specific interval. I only create two units. I then seize the resource. I attach it to the entity. I move the entity, which then implies the resource move, uh, is moving along with it. And it is then released once it gets into the destination, the ship, uh, shape shipping. I will just delay the entities to remain visible, and then I'm going to dispose of it. So let's see what this model actually does when, when ran. I can speed it up a little bit. There are my two resources in the tea room. There's the first entity arriving. It's summoning one of the resources, who picks it up, and moves it over to the shipping area. As soon as it drops it off, it goes back to the tea room because another resource is already taken care of the second entity that arrived. It places it, moves back to the tea room, and you can actually see that after 100 seconds, the entities disappear from our shipping area. And there you go. What we can now do is just update our source block to not limit the number of arrivals. And when we run this model and we actually speed it up, you will actually see that from time to time my two blue resources will not necessarily walk all the way back to the tea room. In this case, the time in time between arrivals of my entities are actually quite quite long, so they do have time to go back to the tea room uh, every time. To actually see that we can bypass that and allow them to walk back directly to the um, to the arrivals area, let's just go and play around with the spread of our inter-arrival time. So I'm going to increase that significantly to 15. So let's also decrease the inter-arrival time to a mean 60 seconds, standard deviation of 15 seconds, and now we should have entities that are actually created a lot more frequently. I'm going to increase the model speed. And you can actually see that as soon as there are entities arriving, it does not always allow 
the agents to walk all the way back to the resources to walk all the way back to the team.